Over the next few minutes, I would like to talk a little bit about power inverters and their benefits for using a power inverter. First, I'm going to talk about the purpose of a power inverter. Second, I'm going to talk about the different power inverter technologies. Third, I'm going to talk about sizing the proper inverter. Fourth, I'm going to talk about the installation of inverters. And fifth, we'll go over some key features of power inverters. First, the purpose of a power inverter is to convert DC power to AC power which means you can use solar panels, deep cycle batteries, wind, or any type of DC power source and convert it so you can use regular household appliances with your DC power sources. Second, I'd like to talk a little bit about the power inverter technologies. Currently, there are two different types of technologies for power inverters, modified sign inverters and pure sign inverters. Modified sign inverters are the most common and economical inverter that you will find. The modified sign that comes out of the inverter is more of a step sine wave and tries to mimic a traditional pure sign line. A pure sign inverter is most similar to city power. That's the power that comes out of your outlet. It provides cleaner power and more efficient power. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the sizing of your inverter. First, you need to determine what you will be running with your power inverter. I'm going to show you a few examples of how to determine the size of your appliance. Here, I have a just a standard heat gun. Most of the time, you will find the amp or watt rating next to the model number or serial number of the device. On this heat gun, it has 120 volts and 1400 watts. So this heat gun is rated at 1400 watts. So when you're sizing your inverter, probably want to go with an inverter a little bit bigger than what the heat gun is rated. Another example is a laser printer. We have a laser printer that's 120 volts at 9 amps. In order to convert amps to watts, you do a simple formula of volts times amps equals watts. So you'd have 120 volts times 9 amps, which gives you your watts. You can also recharge your batteries using solar panels or some type of wind generator. But again, the most common application is if you have your inverter installed in your car, you're using your car's uh, alternator. As you can see, inverters come in many shapes and sizes. They come from your, just your little basic inverter that plugs into your car's cigarette lighter socket. Most car cigarette lighter sockets can only provide 180 watts of power. That is very important. Applications for these small inverters are cell phones, video games, smaller laptops, digital camera chargers, but mostly smaller applications. As you can see, we have smaller inverters and then the really big inverters. With each inverter, the way that they connect to your batteries are most commonly by battery posts either a bolt and nut or just a slide-in application. Power inverters come with numerous safety features such as high voltage shutdown, low voltage shutdown, short circuit protection, and thermal protection. I'm going to turn an inverter around here so you can see the front panel of an inverter. As you can see this inverter happens to come with four outlets it has a display panel that measures battery voltage and percent load. It also has what we call an AC direct connect terminal block. An AC direct connect terminal block is a nice feature because if you need to pull more than 1500 watts of power out of one outlet, you will direct connect to this terminal block. UL strongly recommends that you only pull 1500 watts out of each outlet. However, if you do have an application that is more than 1500 watts, you would definitely use the AC terminal block. Most of our bigger inverters do include the AC terminal block. Another thing with inverters is that you can split the AC outlets as many times as you need to as long as you don't exceed the wattage of the power inverter. Another type of inverter that Ames Power manufactures is an inverter with a built-in charger and transfer switch. This allows the inverter to pull power automatically from the batteries and then switch off to AC power once the AC power comes on. A very common application for an inverter of this type. Okay, so let's review. Today, we talked a little bit about different power inverter technologies, what power inverters do, 
how to size inverters, and the best application for inverters. If you have any additional questions, please visit our website. Here's one of our new uh, style sine wave inverters. This one's made by Xantrex, uh, rated at 1,000 watts AC, which is really about uh, 8 to 10 amps when you start uh, drawing off of it. Uh, it's a fairly simple device, an on-off switch, and a, a small control panel lets you know when the power is coming in and how much is going out. We also have a place to plug in, a standard uh, extension cord, and a small fuse in case uh, things get too high that will pop out. That's the front controls and on the back fairly simple uh, area where we connect our battery. Very obvious plus and minus. This is a DC system and reversing those will blow the thing up and the mystery smoke will come out. So we watch our polarity. Uh, this one also has a fan on it to keep the inside items cool. Here we have a slightly smaller uh, XL Tech inverter. This again is a sine wave inverter. We'll rate it at 250 watts. A fairly similar setup. We've got power coming in, positive and negative, and our regular switching and a place to plug in. This one's a little bit smaller. Again, 250 watts versus 1,000 watts.